I'm Chris Sanchez and welcome to Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, and local restaurant reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you how to qualify a, uh, an applicant for a rental property, how to calculate the income to see whether or not they qualify based on the um, leasing or tenant screening criteria that you select as a landlord. Uh, some of them get tricky um, when you have applicants that have different jobs, multiple sources of income, you have two, three, four applicants sometimes for a single property, and uh, sometimes they have two uh, jobs. Sometimes they've had uh, multiple jobs over the past two years, for example. So I'm going to break it down. And to give you a quick background here, I was a mortgage banker and broker for many, many years before I got into property management. So um, I've seen um, applications and income documents and tax returns like crazy. I've seen them all. So um, I want to give you that, that quick background because I'm going to show you how I look through the applications and I qualify the income, which is uh, screening an application or underwriting it, underwriting it, if you will. Um, on this particular one, I took an actual case study. I'm an application I received today, as a matter of fact, which is why I had the idea to make this video. Um, I have two applicants who are applying for one rental property, a uh, husband and wife. And it's a tricky one because the uh, the main applicant, the, the wife, she has um, a certain type of income, but the husband, applicant number two, actually had multiple jobs in the previous year, but now he has a good solid job and actually an increase in income. And um, it's just a little tricky. So I'm gonna bring you down through the calculations to show you how I arrive at it. And also to show you how to determine if somebody actually meets you know, they make the cut, they meet the qualifications, uh, which is whether you have it said as um, the income that they need to make is three times the monthly rent, or if they need to be at two and a half percent of the monthly rent amount. I'm going to show you how to divide, um, come up with that number, how to divide it so you can figure out whether or not they qualify. Um, I have here is my wall, which is usually the available rentals. And um, I just wiped it off because I wanted to show you guys how I came up with these figures. So follow along. And the cool thing about YouTube is that you could stop, rewind, and go back. And if you have specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will be happy to help. And hopefully you could see this because I cannot see myself on that camera. Okay, applicant number one. This is the wife. In uh, 2019, I'm going to bring you down to the calculations. 2019 W2, and I'm trying to get through this so I don't make the video too long. Uh, Twenty nine thousand three fifty seven and thirty nine cents. And as I go through, I'm going to um, do away with the pennies, do away with the cents. Uh, so this one was relatively easy. She had a one W two for the previous year, so it makes it very easy to, to determine what the total gross income. And that's the key word, gross income. I'm looking at how much did this person make over the whole year, two thousand nineteen. And today we're in the middle of April, two thousand twenty. Uh, so everybody should have a W-2 now if they're employees, uh, wage earners, $29,357. And what I do is like, okay, now I know how much this person made. I want to break it down on average. Take the total amount, divide it by 12. You see that? You divide it by 12 months. I come up with 2446 and 44 cents. But because we like to keep it simple... Take out the pennies, I don't need to see those. Okay, this is for a rental application, it's not for a mortgage application. Uh, all right, 2446. So I've determined how much this person makes or made on average in 2019 per month. Now, the pay stub, this one you don't see it very often. Uh, this person actually works for a, um, uh, a government organization, and because um, I'm not going <laughs> to disclose who or what they do. Uh, government organization and the uh, the paycheck is actually only once a month so it made it very easy to calculate this one and they get a monthly base pay okay so now we're talking about job uh, one job and going based on the pay stub 2648 and 64 cents and that actually is the base pay Usually I have to look uh, look closer at a uh, at a pay stub, go through it to determine what is the actual base pay, which is the stable monthly gross income 
stable is the key word okay uh, this one is on a salary it's one of those jobs that is just it's a fixed salary it's the same amount every single month and the tricky part is that they actually get paid only once a month so the you always have to look at the pay period if you see a dollar amount from what period usually people get paid twice in a month so it could be first through the 15th um, so you have that pay period sometimes people have a pay period which goes every other week so it'll be uh, for example from the 7th through the 21st as an example so you have to look at the pay close attention to the pay periods this one was uh, it was actually a March pay stub so it went from March 1st to March 31st this one made it very simple all right so that's how much you made but actually aside from this there was a little bit of income not very much but um, extra little job or income category if you will and it was a little bit more money which I'm not including here and what I did when you look at the gross income I take the year to date that's the second thing that I'm looking at Y T D year to date I want to know how much have they made year to date as of that pay stub okay that pay stub was dated March 31st so on the year to date this person had made eight thousand five fifty four and two cents which we're going to leave off uh, as of 331 now after I get the year to date I know how much they have made as of that particular date I want to know what they've averaged for this year because we already know what they averaged for the previous year 2019 now I want to find out how much have they averaged 2020 and I can't go based on today today is April 14th I can't go based on today because my, I don't have that pay stub from today but I will go um, based on the last paste that provided, the most recent, so I know how much to divide it by. In this case, they made it easy with this paste stub because it was three full months. So you take this amount, divide it by three, and 2,851. Okay. Now, when I compare this number to last year, they are on track this person is on track as of the end of March very similar to the income average from the previous year that's good stability and this number is higher so they made a little bit as of March uh, it appears that they've made more on average this year than last year okay so after I did all this I look at what did they average last year what are they averaging this year and what is the base pay I'm gonna take the most conservative and I'm going to emphasize the word conservative stable base pay and I'm going to take this one in the middle which happens to be exactly in the middle between 2400 2600 and 2851 that is the number that I'm going to use for qualifying because it's the same amount every single month now I take it a step further and that's a different video but um, I actually do an employment verification, so we get a verification directly from the employer to state, yes, this person is still working here. And this is even so much more important, guys, because we're in middle of April 2020, coronavirus, jobs are uncertain. We need to find out if they are still currently employed. And then the second thing, what is the likelihood of the continued employment moving forward? It's a government agency. Are they on uh, temporarily laid off, furlough? Do they expect to return? I want to know that because this is how much they made as of March. This does not include April income yet. So something to be uh, cautious, something to look for. But for the, this exercise, that's the amount I'm going to use. 2648. We drop off the pennies. 2648 for applicant one. 2648. Okay. Application number two, applicant number two. This one is a little bit trickier, okay? This guy, the husband, uh, he's doing good. He's advancing in his career, in his uh, profession. Last year, 2019, it was tricky. And hopefully you can see this, and uh, this way I'm narrating it, uh, in case these numbers come out a little small. Last year, he had three W-2s, which is why I asked for W-2s. And there's other reasons as well, but that's, in a, that's another video. Check this out. So 25, 825 for job one, 
982 and 5727. Now you might be thinking, God, this guy had three jobs, right? You know, what's going on? Well, life happens. Maybe he was trying to find the, the right thing, right? Right job. But for this purpose, I'm trying to calculate how much did this guy make last year? And that came out to 54,534. Good start. So now that I have this number, I know that is the 2009, 2019 total, 54,534. You take that, divide it by 12, and you will get your monthly average for last year. Gross earnings. 4,544. 4544. Okay. I'm going to leave that one alone there. 4544. Now I know what he made last year. Now what I'm looking for is uh, the current pay stub and what's going on with the current job. So this particular situation, and I'm happy for the guy, he got a uh, special certificate for the type of work that he's in, which means um, sort of a, a new license, which gives him the ability to earn quite a bit more. So um, his income earning potential actually has gone up quite a bit. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what happens at the end of 2020 after you get into September, October and look at the pay stubs because as of now he's on track to um, make quite a bit more, <laughs> significantly more than last year, but we have a short income history that we're able to document so you'll see what I'm doing here. Okay, 2019, 4,544. Current, here's how, the way that the pay stub looks. I'm going to leave this up here. Okay, as a 2019 average, because I want to make this, I want you to follow this. And I know the numbers don't show up uh, super clearly on the camera, so. All right, so the pay stub, you'll notice this with some people, they have a lot of different pay grades. Sometimes you'll find it with like nursing assistants or the doctors. They'll have a base pay, overtime pay, holiday pay, double pay, on call, sick hours, on and on and on and on and you'll have a list of different pay uh different pay categories and different pay rates so which one do you use how do you come up with it that's what i'm going to talk to you about all right this guy <laughs> has a lot of pay speed. so i'm going to go based on base and the reason i use base pay because it's the stable monthly predictable income stability is the key and i want to stay on the conservative side with the numbers so base pay this guy actually gets paid hourly so $26.52 per hour. $26.52 per hour. Now the key point is how many hours does this guy work? Uh, in order to calculate this, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to get too technical, but I'm going to show you how I arrive at this. If, keyword, if the uh, employee works 40 hours and it's consistent throughout the year, then you take hourly pay times the amount of hours worked per week, 40 hours in this case, and that's our assumption, uh, and you can verify it with the employer, times 52 weeks equals 4,596.80. So I'll walk you through that again. Rate. which is 26.52. The hourly rate times the amount of hours in a week times the amount of weeks in a year will give you, ah, I did this backwards, good thing I'm checking. That'll give you a total amount. And I didn't calculate that portion, but I need to show you how. Because I just did the shorthand. 26 times 52. All right, check this out. 55,161 and 60 cents. So that's how you get the total amount for the year. Rate times 40 times 52 equals this amount. Once you get this amount, that's the total amount over a 52 week year. Divide that baby by 12, 12 months. 
and that gives you your four thousand five ninety six and eighty cents. Last time, this is the tricky one. Hourly rate times the amount of hours in a week times fifty two, which is fifty two weeks in a year, divided by twelve. So that'll give you your annual total divided by twelve months. Here's your average, okay? Base pay. Four thousand five ninety six. Two thousand nineteen. Base four five nine six. Done. Rewind if you need to. All right. Now, and I'm almost done. Now I'm looking at the guy's year to date income, okay? Because his base pay was $26 an hour, but he has overtime pay and double time pay. And actually out of this pay period, which was two weeks, he had about 80 hours of work, but an extra 30 hours of overtime, which is significantly more than the base pay. He's like, his paycheck was double than what it should be. And because of that, I wanna find out what is this guy averaging? Once you tally up all the different pays, the gross pay, it's interesting. Year to date. YTD. $23,543. As of, you need to know the date. 321-2020. And pay attention. That's how much he has made as of March 21st. So how do we get the year to date average? Y, T, D, average, that's a G. How many months do you divide it by? Well, don't do it by three months because he only this pay stub only reflects 21 days in March. 21 days out of a month is three weeks out of a month, three out of four, is 75 percent i hope you follow so there's two this number includes all of january all of february and 21 days in march which is three quarters of the month so you take the big number 23,543 to get the year-to-date average divided by 2.75 two full months which is january and february and 0.75, which is three quarters of March. That will give you a whopping 8,561 and nine cents. And because we're keeping it simple, take out the cents, 85.61. Holy cow, okay, holy moly. This year on track, March 21st, this guy has made, on average, $8,500. Whereas last year, on average, after combining all those jobs, he made $4,500. So this guy is almost doubling his income, gross income, taking that snapshot where he's coming from. Okay? So what do we do? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what I did and what I'm going to do. This is great because I know that there's a lot of overtime there's double time pay. It's a solid company. It's a local company. And um, I have a strong feeling with this new um, certification classification that he has for this particular job. It's a um, it's a specific trade. He's going to be you know, up here and he's probably going to be with the company for a long time. And it's a it's a job that's in demand right now. So that makes me feel good. Stability and increasing income over time. Um, so I'm not going to use this because there is no guarantee on, I don't want to depend on the overtime and the, the overtime and the double time because what if business slows down right now? Our economy is, uh, part of it has stopped, you know, there's it's shifting. So if I could go based down on the 40 hours, if this guy received no overtime, no double time pay, could they qualify? So that's what I'm trying to do. So I took the base pay, 4596. This makes me feel good, but it includes all that overtime pay which is it just makes the number look a whole lot bigger and this particular applicant has only been with this job 
since like September, October. So I have a short period in 2019, which was one of those W2s, to show um, consistency making this. Now at the end of 2019, it'll show a really good track record as far as the consistency on how much he has been making, how many hours of double time over time has been going because I'll be able to average it out over more months than just 2.75. I hope that makes sense. I'm just taking a conservative approach here. So this makes me feel good, but I'm gonna forget about it. Um, I have, coincidentally, the base pay and the 2019 average were very similar in the 4,500 range. 8561, which is the year to date, which means 2020 is looking bright. And um, I'm gonna go right down the middle, 4596 taking the average or the base pay based on hourly, assuming this guy actually does work 40 hours minimum every week, he should be fine. It'll be making 45, 45, almost 4,600 plus. So I'm taking the conservative approach. All right. So now we're going to put these two together and wrap it all up Let me make sure I'm still recording. And we're good. This is a long video. It's 21 minutes, but it's really good education if you're following along. Uh, okay, applicant one made 2,648 simple numbers. Applicant two, 4,596. Add those two babies together, which is the qualifying income that I'm using for each one of them. How much did we have? 7,244. So that's my qualifying income, okay? Applicant one plus applicant two equals this amount because I'm gonna go combined gross income. Now, how do we arrive? Do they qualify for this rental? Well, let's assume that the rental property is $2,500, okay? I'm gonna put this aside, okay? So we're going to assume the rental is 2,500 rent for the property that they're looking at. So, uh, I'll show you. 7,244 gross monthly income combined divided by the rent income will give you 2.89. If you round, want to round up, we'll call it 2.9. So, 7,244, their monthly gross income equals 2.9 times the rent amount, which is almost three times the rent. Three times the rent, 3X is more of an industry standard. That means that their housing payment, literally, the rent amount is only one third of their gross monthly income. Now gross income is before all the taxes and deductions and all that stuff. So it's a really safe number to go with. If you want to stay on the safest side, go with three times the monthly rent and then you would set your credit score uh, criteria. Um, here, my policy, I'm at two and a half point, 2.5 times, okay? And the reason I do uh, two and a half times is because it, it's a little bit more lenient on the income qualification but combined with a higher credit score requirement. So the combination of a 650 credit score and minimum two and a half times the monthly rent amount is a really good uh, formula that's worked well for me for six years. Um, very well, as a matter of fact, it's just a good combination and it eliminates risk. But in reality, if you remember all that overtime with this particular applicant, all that overtime and double time, they're actually gonna be probably that three times or more. So I feel good safe about that as long as I could verify current employment they still have a job and the likelihood of continued employment that they're still going to have a job next month once we go into May and June and this coronavirus thing settles out. I'm Chris Sanchez this is Sonoma Views I hope that this information has been helpful in one way or another I hope it helps landlords in screening their applicants or uh, maybe somebody out there who's already done tenant screening in the past and just didn't know another way to approach that income and scratch your head, figure out what number should you use, and then um, how do you compare two applications. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to receive future videos from this channel, 
click subscribe, there's a little bell icon, and you'll get a notification next time there's a video. Cheers.